even under the best circumstances, there's never enough money, time, or caregiving resources to do everything that's needed. For the world's aid agencies, that often means a Solomon's choice. Invest in the one or split what little there is, diluting both efforts to help. Take the fight against disease in Vietnam, where HIV and tuberculosis compete for limited resources. The outcome, as we found in a joint project with the Pulitzer Center for Crisis Reporting, can pit one need against another. One month after the baby was born, she started getting a fever. She started coughing a lot, like five or seven times a day. At just five months old, Galtimi Han's granddaughter was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Every time she cried or coughed, her body became very pale, and it was almost impossible for her to breathe, and we were very worried. Even though tuberculosis is a survivable, curable disease, it is one of Vietnam's most deadly killers. Roughly 18,000 people die of it every year. That's almost twice as many people as are killed in road accidents. Even more frustrating to health workers is that half of all TB cases in Vietnam go undetected, turning a treatable condition into an airborne killer. The problem, not surprisingly, is money. Effectively fighting the disease on a global scale would take more than a billion and a half dollars in additional funding annually. TB is a neglected disease. I cannot believe that TB doesn't get the attention that it deserves. The aim is to find TB cases early, identify tuberculosis, put on effective treatment. And with the current funding, um, I think uh, TB program is not able to reach out to all uh, of those in the community that have symptoms. Health officials say TB doesn't get the attention it needs because of higher profile diseases like HIV. I think in the United States and Europe as well, there's been a feeling that TB has been address that we have beaten it and there's been some complacency there and as a result less advocacy and a bit of a feeling that TB is an old disease and so it doesn't get quite as much attention. Even the biggest pool of money that supports TB detection and prevention, the Global Fund, sets its priorities on other health care fights. 55 percent of its grants go to HIV, 28 percent to malaria. But tuberculosis, which kills almost as many people a year worldwide as AIDS, gets just 16 percent. Little Tan Fong was one of the undetected. She was sick for a month before she got the standard treatment for TB, antibiotics. Her grandmother just hopes it isn't too late. In the poor neighborhoods of Ho Chi Minh City, like Tan Fong's, Health clinics are well aware that the difference in funding for TB can mean the difference between life and death. If we had more support from the international community, it would help Vietnam do TB prevention work, prevent the spread of TB, and reduce the number of patients in the future. We do our work in silence to serve the patients. Our work isn't celebrated like that of people who work in other fields. Part of the problem lies with Vietnam itself, which has failed to meet its funding targets. Even worse, the government has cut its 2014 TB budget by 30 percent. The director of Vietnam's TB program admits it worries him. Yeah, TB, uh, the budget cuts, it really concerned me in terms of the, uh, running the TB control. If the funding for TB did not increase or not, not increase enough, so people will go to die, will be going to die. A view echoed by international aid agencies. Personally, I find TB a very compelling disease, and I think it's, it, it should be a priority for all of us who are involved in public health. So I don't understand uh, why it doesn't get more attention and why it's neglected. If there isn't enough funding or awareness or ability to diagnose and treat people with TB, it has a huge impact on the communities because we're talking about um, people dying, people dying slowly and painfully over time. Tan Fong's grandmother fears for the child's future as she struggles to recover. While she was being treated, I was very anxious to know what was happening to her. 
but after nine or ten days, the doctor only said that she was in serious condition and nothing else. I feel very sorry for her every time I see her coughing. If I had known she had the disease, she would have taken the right medicines. She is still so young and it hurts me to see the doctor operate on her. In the future, I hope the doctor can figure out and treat the disease quickly so that she can grow up healthy and go to school with her friends. And ahead in our final thoughts this hour, voices from both sides. Where a river runs through the debate on border control, how a Texas community is banding together.